Hi, this is Jill from the North Woods, helping you to change your life in small steps. We talked about why small steps were important, and this time I wanted to give you an example of a book, which mostly I do talk about books that uh, help in certain areas. And this particular book is written by B.J. Fogg. It's called Tiny Habits, and he is a Stanford professor immersed in the idea of how can you make habits that you want to achieve better. He is an expert on that. And this book is the example of why small steps matter so much. He has a three-step formula, which is how he says you can form habits. And he calls them making tiny habits, making them so small you couldn't possibly fail. One squat, one push-up, one tooth floss. Very, very simple. And then you want to do more, you start to graduate onto more, then you've already started your way towards building a habit. But his system is in three aspects. First, there is an anchor, something that initiates your behavior. Then there is the action itself, which is going to be the habit you want to take on. And then you will have the celebration. And the habit should have a couple of characteristics. One, it should be so small, you can't possibly fail at it because it is, again, flossing one tooth, doing one push-up, eating one carrot stick, something very tiny. Then the next step is you want to make sure it's something you actually want to do that is something that you won't ignore. If I said I was going to play a little bit of violin every day, it's ridiculous. I don't own a violin. I don't play the violin. I wouldn't even know where to begin with that. So it's not something I would follow through on. And then the last part is, is will this action lead to something good? Will it benefit me in some way? And those are the three aspects you want to look at when trying to pick what your tiny habit should be. He says that if you pick something too hard, you probably won't do it. If you pick something not beneficial, well, what's the point? And if you're not accomplishing whatever it is you're trying to do, try to make it even smaller. Break it down into half. Break it down into a quarter and do something, again, so small. Maybe you can't lose 50 pounds that you've been trying to lose for a long time. Can, can you lose one pound? Let's just lose one pound. Doesn't matter how long it takes. Lose one pound. Can you write a book? By just writing a single page. Small steps will get you there into what you want to do. And he says most of us are overachievers. So we would actually do more than whatever tiny action we put on our plate, so to speak. We would maybe floss one tooth and then say, you know what, maybe I'll do the rest of the teeth. You don't have to. That's not the rules. But you probably will. You most likely will. And if you don't today, you will in a couple of weeks. I used to have the tiny habit that when I was trying to get to the gym, I didn't have to go work out. All I had to do was drive to a nearby gym in my gym clothes. That's all I had to do. Walk in the door. If I wanted to leave at that point, I can leave. No problem. But you know what? I only left once and it was a day I was feeling sick. The rest of the time I actually did work out. Because that small barrier that I gave to myself encouraged me to go the rest of the way. He's even thinking smaller yet, but that was a good one for me to just get myself to a gym. Then the rest would take over naturally. He says the trigger has to be something that you're good at already. Whatever you're going to do your action, you want to tie it to something you're already doing. So maybe if you want to do squats, You do it while you're brushing your teeth because you're fantastic at brushing your teeth. You do it every night. And for me, all I had to do was get in my gym outfit and drive to the gym, but it was on the way home. I was most of the way there just being at work. It was easy for me to get to. But if the trigger isn't something that you regularly have happen to you, it's probably not a very good trigger. He talks about doing a push-up every time someone rings his doorbell, and he says he has a lot of Girl Scout cookies coming his way out the front door. So this was a good trigger for him. For me, I don't have that many people knocking on my door. Be a terrible trigger. But you have to figure out what would be a great trigger for you. What is something you're already doing or something that happens quite frequently, like me driving home from work, that you can tie something to that would give you that repetitiveness that you can actually get your jobs done? And then comes the celebration. Is there a way that you can pat yourself on the back? Is there something that you can give yourself 
that doesn't take away from your goal. If you're trying to lose weight and you got yourself to exercise, a snack would be a terrible type of reward to give yourself. But maybe a dollar in your exercise fund or maybe a gold star on the fridge. And for me, I got to get out of my gym clothes only after I exercised. So the reward was being more comfortable, is easy, it was simple to do, and it was something I wanted. I wanted to get out of my exercise clothes, which are less comfortable than my lounging clothes. But there are simple ways like this to go get your goals. His website, which I'll put on the website, has over 300 different recipes for his trigger action celebration to get you started, to help you get to where you want to go. And again, with these tiny habits, eventually you'll start aspiring to do more. You will want to do more because you've already had that lower level habit down pat. And this gets involved in the investment manager and speaker at a TED Talk, Steve Dunier. I think that's how he says his name. But he was someone who did all 33 hikes in the Santa Barbara Mountains. And these were tough hikes. They were not easy (laughs) strolls, but he did every single one of them. That was his goal. But what he said is that he broke all of those points into what he calls manageable decisions, little tiny increments and small steps. He was able to improve his outcome by these small decisions, one step off the couch, one step into his car, in his car, driving to the trailhead. And then it's one step two steps, three steps, and he kept going. His goal was to get himself off the couch. We all get stuck on the couch. We all get stuck doing something that we do for fun or we didn't intend on doing or we just don't feel like leaving the house that day. He says that in those moments, just putting on your clothes to go hiking is a success. To getting yourself into a car is a success. And he said that every one of those decisions are tiny decisions that You don't have to overwhelm yourself with. You just have to make that small decision. He says that if you're planning on reading 50 books in a year, it's about a sentence. It's about 10 pages. Then it's about 50 pages. Every goal you have can be broken into small increments. So the decisions are very small, just like what BJ Fogg is talking about. And so we'll end the podcast with the famous quote from Lao Tzu that every thousand mile journey starts with small steps. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great week. Please remember to subscribe. And you can also listen to my podcast, Start With Small Steps.